Hey everyone, it's Steph here with the third part of our video tutorial series, where we take this awesome cargo ship model through a detailed texturing process in Toolbag 5. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to carve groups, which are one of the best ways to control multiple layers with one mask. They are best used with sync points, which will incorporate the vector detail I made last video into our baked data. Showing off both of these tools will see me adding weathering to the metal and painted metal on this model. Defo, stick around if you're keen on learning how to make carve group masks from scratch, making use of sync points, grunge textures in masks, and using some of the smart masks the toolbag library has to offer. The first thing I'm going to do is make a sync point. A sync point will grab the curvature, height, and normal data from newly introduced details while texturing. As you can see, if I turn off the rivet and panel line layers, we get the smooth, unspoiled surface of the model. And the curved data looks like this. Turning the details back on shows the sync point auto updates the curvature with all that detail. Now that we have our sync point, Let's whack in a basic deformation layer to add some subtle warping of the metal panels. I found a neat dented material in the library called Bronze Dented. While this ship isn't made of bronze, I will add this to the layer stack and using Alt left click, I'll turn off all inputs on the layer except for normal map. This will add a really nice subtle undulation and noise to the model. Oh, you might have noticed that the rivet normals have been stomped. To fix this, I need to go into the normal map layer mode and set the layer blending to normal detail. That's going to blend this layer's normals to the ones under it, so that both can come through. So be careful when adding layers on top of bump and normal detail, as you'll need to go into the layer blend modes to adjust them. The great thing is, is that you can do this to whole folders, which is what you'll see me do during this video. I updated the normal map data, so I'll want to create a new sync point to carry that data up in the layer stack and include the new normal map data I just added. Perfect. To show you what's happening here, I'll crank up the normal map and then check the height preview on the sync point. We should see that there is new data in the new sync point, and I can preview the first one to show how the two compare. The important thing to notice is that the contrast doesn't change, so it's not adding or multiplying them, so you can add as many sync points as you want without fear. With all this great sync data, I can get the most out of it by making some carve groups. Carve groups utilize a special mask stack, which will blend each layer's visibility inside the group by a custom value range. I can then adjust how much a layer is assigned to a value range using the layer settings on the carve group. You can see on this demo here that as I move these value range bands, the top layer is getting more and less visible because I'm assigning where that layer will be visible on the lighter parts of the mask. They are a great way of layering and controlling heaps of layers at the same time. One of the first carve groups I want to make is the base metal. This group will be the basis for the tarnished steel panels of the plane. So I'll add three fill layers here and I'll make them all different albedo colors so I can easily see what my carve group is doing. Nice neon colors show up best. Next, I'll select them all to open up the right click menu, then hit carve group selected. This will pop them into a carve group like so. Before I do anything else, do you see what I need to do? I lost the vector details, so I gotta select the carve group itself, then jump over to the normal layer mode, so I can set that to normal detail. I need to also do the bump mode as well where I will set the bump to overlay. Much better. Now I've got three layers here, and if I click on the carve group, we can see that for the mask, I'll want the bottom layer to show up in the darker values of the mask, the middle layer to show in the gray areas, and the top layer to only show on the lightest parts. 
Righto, now to start building my mask. I'll switch the canvas view to 3D by choosing the main camera and then set the view mode to texture project mask. I'll also collapse the left UI with this little pop out handle so I have some more viewport real estate. That way we can all see what I'm making here. I'll add a fill layer first and set that to 50% grey. This is our neutral middle. You'll see that the middle colour is now coming through. Perfect. Next, let's add a curvature process in this group. This is the bread and butter of so many carve groups and mask effects. Now we've got some action, but we lost the 50% grey as seen in the mask window here. To fix that, I gotta set the blend mode to add. Cool, but in this processor is grabbing and setting both the cavities and edges to white. But right now, I just want the edges, so I'll slam the cavities intensity setting to zero, and now all we have is the edges. I can then add a new cavity mask by creating a new curvature layer and setting the edges to zero. Can you see what's happened? The cavities are now white, and the layer is stomping all the hard work we just did. We want the base layer to show up only in the cavities, so we need to set the layer to multiply and invert the output to make the cavities dark. Hitting this teardrop here will do that for us, and yeah, there we go. Cavities showing up perfectly, and the layers are all showing on our model the way we want them to. Now I'll adjust the edge curvature to widen it up and make it softer. So now let's add in the real metal layers. I'll delete the debug layers I used and throw in a nickel base and an aluminium scuffed material from the library. I'll tint the aluminium's albedo to orange and while I'm here I'll also tint the nickel a bit. Sandwiched between them I'll drop in this steel blue rubbed smart material. Smart materials are super customizable, because if you look at them, they're just groups of layers and masks. Also, you can save a group out as a new smart material if you'd like to use it again. So I'll just delete the dust layer, change the tint of the blue, and set up the tiling on both layers. Lastly, in the blue coating mask stack, I'll delete the scratches layer. Nice. Now I can dive into the carve mask. So, with the mask layers I already have, I'll set the fill layer to black. Then on top of the edge curvature layer, I'll add a blur layer and increase the blur radius to around 50 to soften the edges. I do this because I want the curve area to expand out, so I can get more real estate on the grey transition. This allows more area in which I can vary the width of the edge selection. I can use a texture like Blobs Blurry from the library to do this. When I add it to my layer stack, I can set the layer blend mode to overlay. This blend mode basically says, if there is a gray value on the layers below me, have my values add and subtract from it if they're not gray. So you can see that the noise is now only affecting the gray values on this mask. Color Dodge works kind of like a super positive overlay. Let me change this to Color Dodge and you'll see the difference. I'll need to adjust the Blobs Blurry texture values to get it looking stronger. This is my base variation to a curvature layer, so I don't get the same consistent size lines across all surfaces. On top of that, I can slap a sharper curvature layer, then set the blending to add to get the fine edge detail back. Uh, but I'll just blur it again, as I just want general staining. Then I'll finish it off with the existing cavities layer. You'll see me doing a lot of this curve blur dodge business as we get to the more complex carve groups later. Just remember that the amount you want to grow the curvature by equals how much grey you can achieve to then either colour dodge, colour burn or overlay a variation mask on top of. Then from there you'll stack more curvature on top with dodge or overlay to get the desired edge detailing. One of the ways I really like to learn is by grabbing smart materials from the library and picking them apart. 
which is what I'll do with the next carve group for the white paint. But before that, I'll just double check the metal. It's looking good, especially on these engine intakes here. That's really where I'm looking, as these will be the exposed areas, as the rest is covered in paint. The one thing I have noticed is that the rivets we've got going on here aren't looking so crash hot. I'm going to head back to the rivet layer and crank up the normal contrast so that they show up way more. Notice after I do this, the sync points will no longer have up-to-date data. Turning on and off layers will auto-update sync points, but editing a layer's contents will disable sync updating until you manually refresh it. I'll just head to any of these sync points and click its little bullseye. That will update the sync point with any changes I made. If I go back and change the rivet sizes, I'll have to again watch out for the desync of the sync point. So again, it's just a simple click like so, and it's back to being updated. Much better. Time to move on to the white paints carve group. So I'll throw a carve group onto the stack, shuffle it to the top and rename it white paint. Since this is a brand new group, I'll have to remember to set the normal and bump settings before I throw in the layers. For the said layers, I'm going to use brightly colored layers again to help see what's going on, as scrutinizing a bunch of white paint is going to make my eyes cross. Onto the carve mask here, where instead of making a mask from scratch, I'm going to use a smart mask from the library to hit the ground running. So from the library, I'll just drag in the smart mask, scratch is chipped, and apply it to the carve group. Sweet as. For my next trick, I'm going to show how I can use this carve group to expose the cool metal I set up earlier by clicking just one button. This invisible base layer means that the darkest areas of the mask will now show whatever layers are under this carve group. Now we have exposed the metal layers underneath. It's so cool, I love carve groups. While I'm here, I will adjust the gradient remapping of the carve group. <laughs> a good tip is to move the fall off center point on the painted parts closer to the non-painted layers for a sharper transition like so. Much better. Okay, but the paint scratches aren't finished yet. The cool thing with smart masks is I can go in and tweak them as I see fit. So to help sell the scale, I need to increase the tiling on these textures in the mask. I'll also go in and insert an inverted curvature layer, which will mask out most of the scuffed variation in the middle of the panels. Then I'll set it to overlay. I want it to be scuffed, but not too scuffed. I'll widen the edge capture in the settings while I'm at it. With the curve now masking out the middle gray variation, Setting the scratches layer to color burn will now have it only show up on the edges. So the mask is looking how I want it to. Now I'll replace these layers with the proper white paint layers. I'll drop in a rust layer for the bottom layer, set the middle layer to white for the primer, and then the top material is this light cream paint material for the top coat. Before moving on, I'll adjust the bump because I want the bump to be raised on the paint layers, not only to show that they're painted on top of the metal, but also raising the bump on the middle layer gives it this bubbled paint look from the rusted parts underneath it. Finally, I am going to slap on a vector layer to mask out the leading edge on the wings. We don't want paint there, so I'll quickly mask that with the pen tool in a few sections. The reason I'm using a vector layer is just that it's easier for me to iterate on if I need to. I do have to be careful as I'm drawing it to look out for separated meshes. I have to start new shapes on the separated engine doors on the wing. As I tidy this up, I'll finally enable symmetry on the vector layer to copy it over to the other side. Sweet, that looks really good. Well, that covers the basic introduction to some of the ways you can make and use carve groups. 
Join me on the next video for a way more in-depth tutorial on how to make a more elaborate and custom carve group mask with many layers. Until then, make sure you give a like to the video and sub to the channel and then take care of yourselves. Till next time, cheerio friends!